In case you missed it, I am now a dual German-British citizen, which means that I have my British passport, but I also have my all-singing, all-dancing German identity card, which is a marvel of modern technology. By which I mean it has a chip inside of it. All German citizens are required to have an ID card unless they have a valid German passport. These two documents are the only official and definitive proof of your identity. Something like a driving license, for example, doesn't count. It's commonly believed that you have to carry your ID at all times. This isn't normally true. In Germany, it's enough if you possess one. There are some EU countries where you do have to carry ID, but Germany isn't one of them. But there are times when carrying ID does become mandatory. That's the case if you're carrying a weapon. It's also the case if you're working in a job where something like tax evasion or human trafficking are common. So that covers things like builders and prostitutes. My ID card is now how I confirm my identity to German government agencies and law enforcement, as well as some private companies. For example, I would need my ID card to open a bank account, or if I don't look old enough to be buying alcohol, I can use my ID card as proof of my age. One of the things that surprises many visitors to Germany is that there are cigarette vending machines in public places. Well, if you're paying in cash, it won't actually sell you any cigarettes until you insert your ID card to prove your age. I can also use my ID card as a passport for certain journeys. I can use it to get to any EU member state, and that includes French overseas territories, if I ever feel like a spontaneous trip to Martinique. There are a few other European countries I can get to as well, and if certain conditions are met, Tunisia and Egypt. And on this subject, a lot of people are under the impression that the Schengen Agreement allows passport-free travel anyway. It doesn't. It abolishes permanent passport checks, but it doesn't abolish the need to have a passport or an ID card with you when you cross a border. Temporary passport checks can be instated at any time. The last time this happened was um, earlier this year in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you do go to another country, you really need to make sure that you're not trapped on the wrong side of the border without ID. The information printed on the card is quite basic, but is also stored in electronic form and can be read with a card reader. Government agencies with the right level of authorization can also access more personal data if they need to. Now, we are told that this system is completely secure. The problem is, if it isn't, we won't know until it actually is compromised, when it will be too late. More interestingly though, I can get a card reader or use an app on my phone to identify myself online. And that means that in theory, there are some routine bureaucratic tasks that I can now do remotely instead of having to go to the administrative offices in person. Obviously, this is a very important document. So what should you do if you find one that's been dropped in the street? Well, you can simply hand it in to the nearest police station or lost property office. Even better, you can just put it in the next mail collection box that you see. And then the post office is obliged, actually obliged, to deliver it to its rightful owner without charge. Or, if the owner lives close enough and it's convenient for you, deliver it yourself. The address is printed on the back. Just try not to be too... stalky about it. Hi, you dropped this. Now I know where you live. I can also use my ID card as a passport for certain journeys. Bugger. And even under certain, certain, ah, yeah. The information printed on the card is quite basic. It's always, 